Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, Steve, how do you manage to work in receiving all by yourself uh -huh. with no help whatsoever? To which I say, did you know, Bunny, that caffeinated gum is back? Really? No, I did not. I didn't know the gum was ever caffeinated. Yeah, it's called Alert Caffeine Gum. And I have it here in my hand. One serving contains 40 milligrams of coffee or about as much caffeine as half a cup of coffee. <laughs> Could get a great. So for like $2 and some change, I got eight pieces of caffeinated of caffeine gum. And yeah, one piece is half a cup of coffee. And it's pretty much pure caffeine so it tastes like shit so you kind of need a second gum as a chaser <laughs> for this gum because it's absolutely horrible but it does its job which is good so now like in the mornings I will chew a piece of caffeinated gum and then I'll save the coffee for like the afternoon Uh huh. so it's helping is what I'm saying it's helping me get through the holidays. It definitely helped me get through this horrible, horrible week. People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal and hardworking looking employee at my local bookstore for over 17 years now. Yes. And that is a long time. If my career history were a person, I would probably want to go into a different career because what 17 year old Wants to work at a bookstore for almost two decades. So I'm thinking YouTube personality. Uh-huh. Okay. That's a good job for young people and millennials. You know, I'd probably want to be one of those ivory-teethed, white-skinned jackasses who does a stupid thing and makes a 15-minute video around it. Kind of like Diet Johnny Knoxville. Yes. You know? Zero. Calorie, gluten free, all organic, bam margera. I say this because apparently there was some news out of Australia. A YouTuber uh, cemented his head inside of a microwave oven for a video. Okay. And then he got stuck because, of course, because duh, because common sense. So the fireman had to come and basically chisel this YouTuber's head out of a microwave. And that's a, <laughs> and that's a career now. Uh -huh. That's a career. That's like a job for young people, for millennials. So what is it that you do? Oh, me? I'm a professional parent disappointer. <laughs> oh, so, so you mean you're a YouTuber? Okay, then. That's a job. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And as such, I really do have my hideously bony skeletal fingers on the pulse of the book world. And I am here to thrust my uh, hideous fingers in your ear holes with this week's epically uneventful installment of Notes from the Bookstore. Dun, dun, dun. And this week's notes from the bookstore is by the UPS Postal Service and their all-new state-of-the-art Y'all B system. <laughs> it's their Y'all B system, brand new. They've been they they they're almost ready to uh, to uh, start their Y'all B system. Y'all B, as in the UPS. If our drivers do end up striking this month y'all be screwed <laughs> so yeah apparently the UPS workers have threatened to go on strike this month and I guarantee to you that that is in the back of the mind of every receiving manager everywhere yeah literally everywhere like I could 
I could meet a Walmart receiving manager, what with his insane clown posse hoodie and his numerous face and neck tattoos. We're polar opposites is what I'm saying. Uh-huh. But I, I could probably comfortably converse with this guy for a solid 15 about the about UPS and the possible UPS strike. Yeah. And then and then after that, I, I, I've run out of conversations. <laughs> Really like your neck tattoo. You know how they picked the the CEO of Walmart. You know how they did that, Bunny. Oh, how did they do that? I I, I thought you were still talking to the mythical guy. No, no, no. The uh, the uh, an employee said, "Hey, right now I, I'm I I just work in the stock room, but I think I want to be a manager." And the store manager said, well, we'll, well, uh, we'll put you through the interview process to be a manager. So let's just do this by the books the way we do all the other people who want to be a manager. Uh, let's, let's take a look at your neck tattoos. <laughs> say, and the guy said, well, I don't have any neck tattoos. And the store Ooh. manager said, well, hot damn, we just found our new CEO. <laughs> Here's a suit and a tie. We found one. So. No, I don't remember why the UPS delivery people are striking. I think I read it in an article and then just quickly forgot it. There's a lot on my plate this month. It's very stressful. So, I, so I, I think I read an article. So you mean stri- you mean they're striking in the sense of they're not going to be working, not in the in the sense that they're all completely dazzling. No, no, I mean they are literally going to. They are literally uh, thinking about not working in December. <laughs> Is there something so, in particular they have against December? Um, it's the it's the strongest month for them t- to quit. Uh. I think would be would would be my guess. I forgot the reason why they're quitting, but I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that the reason why they're quitting is because they finally looked in a mirror and went, "Oh shit, we work for UPS." <laughs> is that why I'm wearing these shorts? Oh crap! This is a horrible job. We need to strike. <laughs> so, so there's your reason, Bonnie. Yes. This week for notes from the bookstore. Let me find it. Okay, I got it right here in my hand. This week, this week for notes from the bookstore, we're going off script for a very special story. Okay. Besides, at this point in December, almost every episode is going to be exactly the same. So here's this month's bullet points. Work sucks, delivery suck, customers suck, the distribution center is sending me way too much junk, and hardly anyone is helping me at all to get all of this crap onto the floor. I'm going insane, and I want to cry. So with that out of the way, Uh I'm going off script. But first, I just want to remind everyone that this, this, this portion of the podcast notes from the bookstore this podcast of the folk on film this is all fake this part of the show is entirely 100% fake and just the the figment of my imagination none of this is real all and right. so any similarity at all between this segment and an actual retail store out there is just purely coincidental Okay? Okay. Okay. That being said, we got an email, Bunny. Uh, okay. It is in my hand. And it is amazing. Eleanor, you're really bringing the podcast down. Dramatic. Well, Eleanor, slip on your own time. We got an email. It is from a man named Hunter. I won't go any further. Yeah. He has a Gmail account. Okay. Um, and this email is a oh, oh it, 
I've, I've got it in my hand. Uh, the headline says media advisory bookstore manager violates the culture of human rights and human decency. All right. It's an email from a customer very upset with my store and specifically with the store manager. Now, we're going to be talking. I'm going to read this email to you. I, I, I want to take this time to say, though, that um, – University of Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield is a white man. Okay, important to know. Yeah, it's important to know that University of Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield is a white man because I feel that when I read this email to you, which again is totally fake, um, that I think your mind might go the same place that I did, and that this is someone upset about race. This has nothing to do with race. If it has anything to do with race, it has to do with the white race. All right. But this is, this is the email. I will be changing a few things to protect the innocent. Uh, uh, store management. This email is to notify you of an escalating media event. Oh. Today at 2.30, I went into your store to buy the new issue of Sports Illustrated in the same town where star Heisman contending quarterback Baker Mayfield attends the University of Oklahoma. See, there, there were like four college there were like four college uh, football players who were up for the Heisman Trophy this year. And one of them is Baker Mayfield, a apparently talented white football player from Norman, Oklahoma. And so this customer went into the store to buy a copy of Sports Illustrated. Everybody wanted it. And we were we were having calls. People were lining up. It, literally, there was a period in time where every phone call was just to see if we, ha- if we got in the new Sports Illustrated yet. Yeah. So to the surprise of no one, the Sports Illustrated magazine was available at the front of the store. What is absolutely unacceptable, however, is the manner in which the magazine was displayed. Oh. In a clear violation of the culture of human rights and human decency in America, the issue of Sports Illustrated was displayed Upside down. <gasps> Son of in a, a com- bitch. In a completely disrespectful manner that your store should be ashamed of. Yes. Beyond the culture of respect, the professionalism of your industry would cast blame on the stocking of these shelves as no store places books or magazines upside down and calls it the correct way to do it. <laughs> when I spoke to the store manager, she defended this atrocity to American values. Oh, man. You fucked by up de- this time. By defending the wrong way to stock her store shelves, she defended the culture of disrespect that would see our very human rights marginalized. Yes. The, the man's down. got a point. You can't you can't blame him here. Yeah. And, and Upside Down Magazine doesn't just say laziness. It says that the individual on, on the front of the magazine isn't worthy of the hard-fought respect that got him there. Yeah. Now, see, here's the thing. We got like 200, 250 copies of this magazine. And so when you have that many copies of a magazine, you can't have all of them facing the exact same way because they will immediately start falling off the magazine. So sometimes we will put maybe like 15 facing one way, 15 facing the other way, 15 facing the first way, just to kind of make make sure that we get a maximum amount of this magazine on the shelf. Right. This man saw that we had a few one or two that may have been upside down or backwards and he lost it <laughs> furthermore when i asked the manager to fix the error i was the human being that was marginalized even further 
I felt like my legitimate concerns weren't worthy of her respect, and she refused to correct the mistake. When pressed on the issue, she said that the magazines might fall if they weren't displayed in a way that clearly conveys bias against our hometown hero, University of Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Therefore, it, it gets better. Yes. Therefore, here are my demands going further. The man has demands. The man has okay. demands, okay. The man has demands. Number one, an acknowledgement, a verbal acknowledgement from the store manager's immediate supervisor that the corporate offices as well as the corporate communication staff are made aware of this flagrant violation of human rights and human decency. Two, that the Sports Illustrated magazine Featuring University of Oklahoma star quarterback Baker Mayfield. Oh, is he on the cover? I had no idea. You hardly mentioned that in this email. <laughs> Featuring star University of Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield be displayed in line with professional industry standards. That being right side up. Uh-huh. Three. That a formal apology to a, a formal apology to me a lifelong customer who expects basic human respect when asking that my rights to human decency be respected in full as an American. Yes. Well, so, you know, you can't say the man doesn't have a point. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Here's the end of the email, which was not only sent to our store and to our store manager, but also our district regional manager and corporate headquarters. And and also, I think the man who invented books also <laughs> got a copy of this. Uh, the person who invented the letter Q. Yes. It's like CC'd on this. It's an important letter. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just because it's used, here, a lot, used a lot, it's, it's, it tends to be overlooked. But here's the kicker. This is the end of the email. If my demands are not corrected by midweek, I will be notifying the following media affiliates. Okay. KOCO News 5, KWTV News 9, Fox News 25, KFOR News 4, The Norman Transcript Newspaper, The Oklahoman Newspaper, and WWLS The Sports Animal. Uh oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on a second. I understand you're upset, sir, but there's no need to get WWLS the sports animal notified. I mean, if you tell WWLS the sports animal, we will be firebombed. Yes. Have you heard WWLS? I'm a big fan of uh, Hunter and the Doug. Hunter uh, and the Doug. Hunter and the Doug, Wacky Mornings, uh, weekdays on WWLS, the sports animal. Love it when they do their crazy old lady character. I made all of that up, but it sounds real in my heart. It's, and we it live sounds in a, like a real show, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a real show, and we live in a post-facts world. So I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, Boomer and the Doug is a real show. I would so not be that's the email. Yeah, so that's the email that we got. And uh so it it, it she my store manager read it to me and she had a hard time getting through it without cracking up laughing. When <laughs> she was done, this is what I said to her. I said, "Look, the man has a point." You do have a history. And she said, what are you talking about? And I said, well, what about the time just a few days ago when I came to work and you were on the phone and I heard you clearly as clear as day saying, you know what we should do in the store? We should start a jihad against human decency. Yes. And then you started yelling in some foreign language that I can only assume is Arabic. Mm hmm. 
Or what about that time on the 4th of July when I brought an apple pie and you slapped it down from my hand? <laughs> and, and you started yelling at me in some foreign language. What about that time that I brought a puppy and then you killed the puppy and then started killing babies? Yes. And So what I'm saying is, is that our store manager does have a history. But seriously, to write that kind of email about it, you know, I, I think that might be uncalled for. So the, the, our corporate headquarters said that the district manager had to call this guy personally and apologize. So the district manager called. And the guy kept him on the phone for over a half hour. <laughs> or, or wait, the, the door's locked, so you can't. Here you go. There you go. So, so this crazy guy, this email writer, kept the district manager on the phone for over a half hour. And then still demanded that our store manager call him personally by midweek or else he's going to have to tell everyone, including WWLS, the sports animal. So she waited until the exact last second to call him because, of course, she didn't want to call him. Of course not. Yeah. But she had to call. She had to call and apologize. And one of the things that he said on the phone was, I've got a few more demands. <laughs> okay. What he demanded was we buy a massive banner celebrating the University of Oklahoma football team and hang it in the store prominently so everyone can see it, so that everyone can know that we don't disrespect the, the town's football stars, especially, not sure if you know this, Heisman contending quarterback Baker Mayfield, who does in fact attend the University of Oklahoma. I didn't even know that. No. Didn't even know that. It's amazing. Well, he never. So the store man Yeah, yeah. So the store manager said, "Yeah, we can't do that." But let me tell you what we can do. We can set up a display. So we had to set up a big display of our favorite University of Oklahoma books and our favorite University of Oklahoma football books. Uh -huh. And uh, let me tell you something. One thing I noticed is that our store manager set up the display on it right in front of our windows. But on the window farthest from the door, farthest from the opening, which I'm pretty sure is an assault on typical American values. I'm pretty sure that by setting up this display as far away from the door as possible, that she is fostering a culture of disrespect that would see my human rights marginalized. I'm going to have to agree here. There was that one time that I came into work and she and, and my store manager said, Steve, you look tired. And I said, I, oh, it's because I was playing baseball. And she said, baseball sucks. Everyone should be playing soccer and then started yelling a la Akbar yeah. at me. So she does have a history. They take their soccer seriously. They do. They take their soccer seriously. People who hate human decency. Uh huh. Human decency. <laughs> So this is an email we got uh, and it's amazing and I love it. I can't believe corporate like, like went along with this jack hole. Uh, yeah, they, they were kind of sort of forced to, but, but it, it's important to note that Baker Mayfield is white and the person who wrote this email is white. This has nothing to do with race. Right. When I start hearing things that, a culture of human rights, human decency. My values have been disrespected. My rights are being marginalized. I'm like, oh my God. Why did you piss off Antifa? <laughs> Is it because you kneeled? Like, what did you do? And then I'm like, oh, wait, Baker Mayfield's a white dude? Wait, the guy who wrote this is a white dude? Oh, well, as far as I can tell, somebody is just upset that he, that, um, uh, he can't be upset about 
his white rights being violated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's obvious that this guy is like walking around going, oh, man, I wish I had racism to fight against. <laughs> I'm just a white guy. Look, that magazine is the wrong way. My rights have been violated. <laughs> Meanwhile, the president, our president, is supporting child molesters running for Congress. Uh huh. The president is attacking our rights to a free press, to a free and equal internet. Meanwhile, cops are shooting unarmed minorities dead and getting away with it. Uh huh. But, but they're not the white, important... man. Yeah. But what's the important thing? Let me tell you what the important thing is. This Sports Illustrated was a skew. <laughs> what? What? Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's all we've been talking about for for the last uh, two weeks. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Yes. Again, it sounds amazing. It it sounds yeah. truly amazing. Yeah. Again, uh, this entire section of the podcast is fake. So just FYI. Yeah. Just to come to possibly cover, but I made that entire email up. No one's crazy enough to write that. I I'm not believing you now. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. I believe that Good. there are more lunatics like that out there. Good. And that is it from Notes from the Bookstore this week. And remember, boys and girls and gender transformers. Do, 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 that's the transformer noise. Uh huh. At least the 80s cartoon transformer noise. I haven't seen any of the transformer movies. I don't know what noise they make now, but that's the noise they should be making is the do, 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 do that they always do in the cartoon. Anyway. You too can save 10% on all of your purchases, and all you have to do is make sure that these Death Star plans are safely delivered to our rebel base on Alderaan. This is our most <laughs> desperate hour. Help me, Bunny Williams. You are my only hope. Yes. <laughs> and cut on that. <laughs>